This is March 25th, 2010, and this is the Idle Thumbs Podcast, episode four. If you weren't making a face, we'd be on the fucking road to it this podcast. It sounds fucking terrible. That's why I'm saying it like that, because it's horrible. <laughs> I want this podcast to be bullshit. March 24, 2010, this Idle Thumbs 4. This the March 24, 2010, this the Idle Thumbs Podcast 4. And I'm Chris Remo. I'm Steve Gaynor. I'm Jake Rodkin. <laughs> that was a good intro. Oh, I, I try every week. What's up? Good job, Jake. What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, Steve. You guys want to talk about video games? <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Yeah, all right. I guess since we're all here. Yeah, and these microphones also are. Th- they're turned on and recording a thing. Mm-hmm. The sounds of your voice. The stars are aligned. Let's take advantage of this unique opportunity. Yeah. Did you guys see Nintendo announced a video game system today? Oh, they announced 3D Studio. <laughs> oh, right. I did see that. M- the, the Nintendo the, Autodesk. Yeah, the Nintendo 3DS Autodesk 3DS, 3DS Max 4. Exactly. Uh, well, that, that'll, that'll be the incremental upgrade to the 3DS. Will be the 3DS Max. <laughs> the 3DS Max. <laughs> I hope so. I really do hope so. Uh, I actually saw the headline and didn't bother clicking it because I was like, that seems like something well, I don't care the about. The headline was pretty much all that was actually yeah, revealed. The, the press so they, release was hysterical. But I mean, they didn't talk about what it, no, like, it was just like, how it was accomplished or a, what it was. On a date, Nintendo will announce a 3D DS oh, okay. temporary title. Mm. But it was not even. It was not even said. It wasn't even temporary title. It, it was, was the Nintendo 3DS <laughs> temp. Temp. They released this hilarious press release that was about four sentences long in like three different fonts for no reason. It, it, it looked. <laughs> it looked like a, a hilarious like advertisement from Old the West, like 1800s like, <laughs> or something. Yeah, because it was but a shitty, shitty version of it. Was it was like all sort of stretched, super block type, and what? like only the names of things were, were like triple bold and like horizontally like <laughs> and wide and stuff. The last sentence of the first paragraph just halfway through is bolded for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't see the actual <laughs> it, press it, release. It looks like it was reporting that the Titanic sank or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, too bad we don't have it available to read, but uh, this was Nintendo's entire press rollout for, for announcing this system for the first time ever was these this like two paragraph garbage shitty looking press release and this is the company basically that, just saying we're going to actually announce it later yeah but okay. i mean nintendo these days is all about having really strong centralized branding and like rolling things out on a worldwide thing and like it was like in the middle of the night because i guess it was in the day during japan it was like in the middle of the night they released they just just stuck out this shitty press release the wires like, are lighting there. up or whatever yeah <laughs> have this maybe uh maybe it wasn't real maybe you guys got punked we checked like a lot. We checked the <laughs> URL frequently to make sure it was Nintendo, uh, because it was such a stupid-looking thing. You're sure Ashton Kutcher isn't involved? He could be involved. You guys aren't being punked here. Nintendo could have hired him as their new uh, design director of hardware. <laughs> please, please punk our audience, yeah. Ashton. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna not announce a 3D, or we're gonna not make it, but uh, send out a sweet press release <laughs> that looks lame. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, oh, no. that'll, that'll show them. <laughs> Worst, uh, and well, it's it's especially funny that they did this before the new DS even comes out. Oh, they the, have the, oh, right, the, the, the DS, DS Max. Max. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah the DS Max. Yeah, that comes <laughs> out in this country. I think next month or something. Yeah, or like in a few weeks. I don't know. Um, They're a weird company. Yeah, that was a strange thing to do. I mean, I, I've already seen a bunch of people who have canceled pre-orders for that thing hmm. specifically for that reason what's so the, what's the motivation to buy a, the ds wide load version <laughs> yeah. anyway though it's like it's just like a ds but the pixels are way bigger and chunkier it's if you're an old person but like those people are gonna be like oh fuck 3ds <laughs> announcement announced i gotta cancel my <laughs> ds max All right, i guess that's true but i mean how much I, bigger is the ds max it's compared like three to the... times as big it's like the ipad <laughs> it is really no okay amazing, how much though, bigger but is it? it's still like well, 100 each, by each, 50 pixels not really i mean each screen is the size of an ipad oh that's so. true <laughs> it's like that microsoft uh book thing notebook the, yeah the right. thing oh, i forget what that thing's called 
uh, courier. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like the courier. It's like courier, but... Uh, but only one of the screens is touch sensitive, and there's a D pad the size of like a shoebox <laughs> over there. It's it's fucked up. So it's can you? So you can pre-order these now. Yeah, well, they're out in Japan. Okay. My uncle told me that he knows someone in Japan oh, that's yeah. totally out there. And you okay, can totally get right. it. Yeah. Then I'm gonna pre-order it because that sounds sweet. You have to get it over uh, off of Lick Sang. <laughs> I think Sony killed them. Or oh yeah, something. That's didn't that, that happen? Down down because oh, yeah, but... to to because of the the huge wave of DSi XL pre-orders, <laughs> I'm just... the threat to the new PSP. Uh, what the fuck are we talking about? I, I'm I'm just picturing a <laughs> dy- dystopian near future where Sony has death squads that they send out because it's like you know corporate controlled world, and they just sent a bunch of Black Ops guys to kill Lick Sang literally. Well, they didn't kill them, but they did make them lawsuited away. Yeah, but I think you're missing Steve's hypothetical. Oh, in the future, yeah. it will actually just be yeah. a bunch of a uh, bunch of fucking big dogs <laughs> <laughs> going, going. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, you'll hear what? The, you'll hear three hundred you swarms of bees. You're no big dog. That fucking big YouTube dog? video of the robot that walks like a dog and slips on the ice and stuff. Oh, oh god, the most that, terrifying. That looks like that looks like two guys that are <laughs> yeah, like walking. Like... And you saw the parody where it was yeah. just two yeah. guys under a sheet that was really convincing. Oh, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> big dog is sweet. Anyway, so Sony. I think Jake is terrified of big dog. I think I hate the big dog so much. <laughs> it's because there was one day when I when I was just kicking and kicking it on YouTube like I do, yeah. and uh, I saw the big dog's video, and I saw a video of a guy who had just homemade built a uh, like paintball turret just with a webcam mm. that would never miss him no matter how much he tried to dodge it. And I watched those back to back and I was like, oh fuck. Wait a minute. <laughs> with these technologies like, combined. Like if the military just bought both of those things and the big dog is like, this thing can just carry like your fucking Volkswagen van on its back yeah. and it's fine on any terrain. Yeah. So that thing. So plus, so attach an auto-targeting yeah. murder gun to a big dog. <laughs> it's okay and just, though because it's just paintballs. And send it down to Lick Sand. So That's true. Nothing to the worry. government made a mistake there's and literally licensed that about. guy's homemade paintball uh, TF2 turret or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That was a foolish move. They should have no. put bullets in it. Oh, they didn't think of that. No. That's an interesting strategy for Sony, though, to buy big dogs and put auto turrets on them and yeah. send them It stops those places. mod chip manufacturers, though. Holy fuck. Wow. Yeah, the mod scene is pretty much dead now that robotic dogs can saw down your door and then bullet you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is effective. Yeah. Well, Developers really needed them to do something about PSP piracy. They were, you know, banging down the doors and Sony responded. With big dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that this is, that was some really interesting video game news. I know. I think we covered all the angles on the video games just now. Yeah. Are you looking for something, Jake? I keep thinking you're. Oh, looking I'm, for... I'm trying to find the press release, but oh, 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 oh right. Oh. The one notable thing about this DS is that it allegedly will let you use 3D without glasses. That's what oh, Nintendo. Yeah. So that's the one like little bombastic yeah. uh, Iwata mustache twirl that was right. thrown into that press release. If you can use 3D without glasses, then I will finally like 3D. I, I would have, if I could have a monitor that just had 3D images that I could just look at, that would be awesome. Those exist, but they're expensive. And Do they actually exist? Yeah. W- without any kind of stereoscopic, stereoscopic glasses or polarized uh-huh. glasses But or most of them require you to have a pretty fixed angle of viewing. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if it's on your wall and you're sitting on your couch, is, that's feasible. Yeah. Is this one of the quotes from the press that I'm just looking at Shaq News and it just says... Uh, wrapped in quotes is Nintendo 3DS temp is going to be the new portable game yeah. machine to succeed Nintendo DS series whose uh, cumulative consolidated sales from Nintendo amounted to 125 million units as of the end of December 2009. Now, that's like a third of the press release. Yep. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so they announced it's going to replace the DS line. Yeah, right, it's the new DS, the whole as opposed to the it's like not million like a, it's little not one replacements. Of the branches, that, yeah. Yeah. But one assumes you can still play DS games on it. Well, it know. says DS in the title. Right. Yeah, it's backwards so. compatible, I believe. And it's car- which which you know it's it makes all your old DS weird. games 3D. Wow. Oh man, it's like when the Game Boy Color made all your old Game Boy games. It's like her, her her Virtual Boy joke, derp derp. Oh, sorry, that's what the internet did today. I think. <laughs> really? <laughs> probably. I didn't even see that. I guess it probably. I actually did. think what I, it actually did was I, what I exactly just did. It's like <laughs> oh, people make jokes about Virtual Boy, like wrapped in in before Virtual Boy. <laughs> right. Joke. Exactly. The internet was in before the Virtual Boy joke today. Unfortunately, all of it was. So <laughs> that sort of came back around. Um, yeah, I did see a virtual boy joke. I saw a picture of Chris looking at a virtual boy and then having a seizure and passing out on the ground. 
Oh, yeah, that happened at, one at time. At the Classic Games Expo in 2006. Yeah. What? This content is not available on IdleThumbs.net because it's hard to find. <laughs> it's it's available, but it's like our entire website. It's like if you go to old.idlethumbs.net like slash articles slash 36.php <laughs> yeah. equals question mark, read it. <laughs> Don't actually go there because it won't. <laughs> That's not a real right. URL. Um, it's it's that, similar to what a real URL on our website would be. Yeah. Yes. Man, it's a good thing we're getting all this great discussion, and I'm really enjoying this. So for those of you just tuning into Idle Thumbs, this is what our podcast is like all the time. It probably is, actually. <laughs> Fact. You guys played any sweet video games this week? Um, I encountered Jackie Rodkins in Bioshock 2, and that made me very happy. But nice. that's all that I did other than making a game. I'm glad that it made you happy. It did. <laughs> that is the goal of doing that kind of thing. And to also, make one person, to make please. Jake's happy. <laughs> well... You put you put a reference to someone's name in a game. You kind of hope that that person thinks it's good. Well, I, I, you also amuse yourself, but that you could do that in a lot of different ways. It's true. There's actually, uh, well, pay very close attention to the opening of Sam Max Three Hundred One. Oh my god! I might have reciprocated. There might be a little <laughs> scoops present in that. I'll take. Oh, you told me about this actually. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. Now I remember you telling me about it. If you it. look closely, there are some hot scoops involved. <laughs> Now the readers can look closely because you haven't told them about what it is. Keep your eye out. Buy <laughs> Telltale Games video games. <laughs> and uh, also buy Bioshock 2 and buy a subscription to Gamma Sutra Premium. Or Game Developer Magazine. Oh, right. You actually do sell something. <laughs> <laughs> you sell that thing that I've only ever gotten for free. Yeah. Well, you're a video game professional. Yeah, but I was getting it back when I was writing for idlethumbs.net. <laughs> I guess I was at that point. I was in QA. I think I did say, "Give me one," because I'm in QA. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think if you're in QA, you can get yeah. one. Yeah, I mean, you're employed by a video game developer. Yeah, <laughs> best episode. This is a good episode. Are you are like you guys having fun with this episode? Oh, yeah, I love it's pretty it. Pretty great. It's so my favorite. So you one, were probably. playing games, probably. I I've heard mention of some sort of Metro 2033, some sort of other game. Yeah, you were skydiving recently after uh, after a helicopter in a different game. Yeah, I've played three video games this week. Wow. Actually, four. Whoa! All right, I saw. I, I Jake wasn't, wasn't impressed by four, but three was. <laughs> we'll see. Because or, or four. Eh. Well, because for me, I I was I, I wasn't you know shocked by the three, but I didn't see four coming. Oh man! Well, that's so, what I do. I'm like M Night Shyamalan there. So what was your first? One is StarCraft Two. StarCraft Two is number one. Oh, yeah, What's so the you, other one? You in terms of hours hours played, players, right? Not anymore. And, uh, what? No. <laughs> that has never been true. You're like the masters, right? Like everybody else has to fight you to be the best. It's true. We are the best StarCraft players in the world. It was surprising to us too because uh, because Korea still exists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, that country has not yet been overrun by big dogs. So <laughs> <laughs> Nick and I might be. Uh, <laughs> Limited. Jake just got physically grossed out by the idea of Korea being overrun yeah. by big dogs. It made you do the face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but you guys are. You're moving but I mean, up. You, you are going. We're, we're up. moving you're up. Moving we're we're up. in the silver league now. We've improved a lot since we started playing. Um, That's like the senior citizens. <laughs> yeah, right. Man, you guys remember those Centrum Silver commercials? I always never knew what those meant. Yeah, but you're in the Centrum Silver League of StarCraft Two yeah. co-op. Um, so we're in the silver, which is the I guess the middle one, basically. I mean, there's. There's uh, copper, There's like bronze, silver, gold, platinum. So platinum. The silver league is a good one, but it's not. It's not for super expert pros. Um, <laughs> but you know, which is the official battle net yeah, term for that rank? Total rad rank. Um, <laughs> Your total rad rank is super expert pro. Yeah, they went in a weird direction with the league system. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's really good. I've been getting a lot better. I'm actually better now at StarCraft 2 than I ever was at StarCraft 1, which is interesting. Um, like it's because it's because Nick is your mentor. He's taking you under his wing. Yeah, and it's it's not even so much that as much as I as think much as you're his mentor. I <laughs> I think more of it is just that I'm actually on a league now that I can aspire to improve in. Whereas in StarCraft 1, um, sort of just being on the ladder was already ridiculously difficult right, just, competition. You, you sign in to be rolled, basically. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, you are done. Yeah. Uh, but whereas in this, they they have this whole really intricate ladder system, and they tie accounts to a CD key, so you can't just make a new one and then start over and load. You know, completely destroy people because you no longer are ranked. Like it's it's really well thought through, and it means that the goal is you know get everyone to basically have about a fifty fifty win loss ratio, and just keep refining what league you're in and how far along that league you are until you get to that point and it's surprisingly good like it's a lot i mean there's you know you still get those times where you just 
destroy someone completely or are completely destroyed within 30 seconds or whatever. But for the most part, it's a really good matchmaking system. And I've totally gotten involved now in, this is the dorkiest goddamn thing ever, but whatever, it's a video game podcast. Uh, like watching, you Which know, is already the dorkiest thing ever. Exactly. So I can't really top that. You're doubling down on the dork. Right. But I, I'm watching all these games that are <laughs> commentated by people and like, actually watching different commentators and like finding the commentators i i so like you're more actually having a starcraft 2 like training montage going on yeah, exactly yeah except uh, that it's just you clicking through various like movie playback controllers right. on the internet click yeah uh but it's good i mean there's actually i i didn't even realize there was such a big community of people who uh like starcraft <laughs> well who, who actually commentate on it and have this whole like there's even within the the commentator community there is the range of you know the guy who commentates stuff in a way that's really graspable and he, he kind of describes what's going on in really uh, elementary terms. You know, he knows what's going on to a, a high degree, but he says things in a way that you can understand even if you're not crazy. And then there's the guys who are super analytical and super predictive and infer crazy things about strategy just by the tiniest move someone makes and can, you know, read really far into their intentions. And then there's guys in the middle. It's it's really cool. It's it. So how long until you and Nick start your, like, uh, Starcraft commentator uh, uh, series. <laughs> I would never have the confidence to do that ever. It would. It would be. It's actually. It's, it looks I was, like he's. Oh no, he's not. Yeah, doing that. exactly. <laughs> actually, one one of the things I've really been imagining a lot lately is is someone is one of these guys commentating one of my matches like because it would be fucking hilarious so because always like, oh, doing the, the classic oh exactly, no he's not yeah. oh he's just he's like, fucking it up these guys well you know <laughs> the most mundane things will cause these guys to realize something you know right. like oh man he's putting the forge up now instead of you know 10 seconds later they wouldn't say it in those terms but they'll make an observation that equates to that and it's like what that, who I built it then just because it's when my guy walked over there. And, you know, he's like, oh, man, he's going for the early Forge expand. And I'm like, uh. And so I can imagine one of these guys commentating one of my games and having all of the, like, oh, fascinating. I've never seen a player do this before. He's taking three probes over here, building it. He must be going for a, an extreme, uh, fast, deny the expansion. Like, oh, uh, well, those guys are dying now. Um, <laughs> I see. He's These guys are doing, no mm, well keeping his cards close to his chest i see like i don't know it would be i would like to see someone do that just to see what it seems like this guy likes up. how the like, tank looks <laughs> exactly yeah because he's making a lot of them and zooming in hmm. so I, I would like to see someone try to read into my strategies until they realize there's nothing to read this guy loves clicking on the unit 15 times to hear all the different <laughs> yeah. things that it can say hmm. <laughs> so anyway starcraft 2 is good it's just the the biggest thing I've I've gotten out of the, being so into this game, which I, which I never was to this extent with StarCraft One. Really, is just realizing how there's always another layer of depth. It's just it's crazy. I I don't think I'm I'm aware of, and I'm not to say there aren't examples of this, but I'm not aware of any other game that has such a well explored labyrinth of depth to it. You know, where you, where you can play at so many levels of skill, and there's all like there's this whole meta game that all the all the commentators and people who cover the scene follow which is how you know people will come up with these strategies that seem unbeatable and then some pro will figure out a way to counter it that no one else had ever thought of before and then that strategy will slowly seep down and trickle down until it's kind of permeated out to the whole StarCraft community and then someone will come up with some other amazingly crazy strategy that no one had ever thought of before and then a pro will counter that and it'll trickle down and it's this whole it just that's why StarCraft is still so popular because it actually supports that level of intricacy and long-term evolution it's really fascinating and I, I can just imagine developing this game would have to be the most stressful like just ridiculously high pressure thing yeah to have uh, expected of you it's this onion that you keep peeling back and back and back and back and back yeah and then in the very middle of it there's one korean man saying <laughs> I, I got here first and uh <laughs> well it's fucked up because they but he's holding an onion <laughs> and you have to start oh, right. peeling, you that start peeling that and then yeah. it's like men in black and this yeah. little plant inside it but there's always just a small korean man inside <laughs> it's like it's like an onion that's a russian doll that's filled with right. korean people well that that actually is a better analogy because that's what it's i mean the crazy thing about this game is that it's like pro sports, which is that after a few years, guys just can't keep up anymore. Like even the crazy total pro Koreans, like after a few like years, they split in half and a smaller Korean comes out of them. They, yeah, it's it's weird actually. They had to breed special people. Uh, no, but they, you know, like 
they'll stick around in the scene, but then they'll they'll kind of fall down in the ranks and they'll they and then they start commentating instead. They do, and oh, then, man, or they and then, or they start coaching teams and stuff. It's actually really interesting. It really acts like. Do they get the like sports, the sort of like windbreakers sports. that say Starcraft <laughs> on the back? Uh, I don't know, but have you ever seen what the pro Koreans wear? Mm -mm. They wear these hilarious like jumpsuit like. I don't like know. Like a speed suit? Yeah. I mean, yeah, basically. It's really hilarious, actually. Good, good. They, I don't really understand how that developed, but there must be some badass. reason. Yeah, I guess. Because <laughs> they're hardcore. Yeah. Anyway, StarCraft is a crazy so thing. So you're going to get one of those that says Idle Thumbs on it? Yes. That'd be amazing. We, should, we, we sell them from Cafe Press. <laughs> Just straight to Cafe Press. Yeah. IdleThumbs.StarCraft.CafePress.com? Yeah. That don't go there. You you should yeah you should go to idlethumbs.cafepress.com though because you might find a horrible old idle thumb store oh yeah you you can still buy idle thumb stuff <laughs> I think you can you can buy Wait, a, but uh, cafe press is not the thing that we ended like oh no but there's an older one on cafe press right where you can buy a license plate holder that says my other car is a booth babe <laughs> <laughs> worst <laughs> yeah. you guys suck it was from like six years ago yeah it was before my time after yeah. that you guys made uh, the other one that was better that I have a bag from yeah. That uses what is Spreadshirt. It? Yeah, Spreadshirt. That's oh, good... yeah. If you want a t-shirt that says Idle Thumbs in the Top Gun logo, you can go to idlethumbs.spreadshirt.com. Which is actually exists. awesome. That's a really nice yeah, shirt. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice shirt. I Thank also you. have a bag that says eight slot bag on it <laughs> and Idle Thumbs on the back, which is another good item. Yep. You can get those two things. Hey, if you want, but you don't have to. Well, you could. Also, we don't make any money off of them because I lost that account information. <laughs> Is your old apartment getting a check every six months or something? I don't think anyone buys enough off it anyway. Also, I don't know if it's even marked up anymore. Yeah. We used to make like 50 cents per purchase, and then we'd get a check if we made sold $25 worth of merchandise or something. <laughs> so this is a video game related this episode. This is our best podcast, probably. Whatever. Fuck that. It's fine. <laughs> Everyone hates it. <laughs> I'm sorry if you've stopped listening already because of the podcast. <laughs> But you're not hearing this, so fuck you. Yeah. What else? What other video games did you play? <laughs> uh, I played Metro 2033. Yeah, what do you think of that? Some of the guys at work are really into it. I like it a lot. Yeah. There's there's some things about Should it. Should I that, play it? Um, I don't know. Prob well, maybe. Probably not. Hmm. Should like, I play my, it? You would be more into it for sure, yeah. I but, was pleased just by reading one of either you or Nick or someone talking about going into a metro and hearing a oh bunch yeah of, that's and, the best and part, hearing a yeah. billion people walking around talking and existing independently of each yeah. other if only in audio that made me <clears throat> pleased yeah you can see them but there's cool stuff like i mean the game takes place in largely in metro tunnels after a surprise surprise because it's a russian game after a horrible cataclysmic event right um but the cool thing one of my favorite parts of the game is in between the actual missions you are in these little uh, metro station bases and they're just c totally packed with human warmth and people talking and laughing Ooh. and crying <laughs> yeah sorry uh, like you know people Kindness. going through all kinds of uh, different conversations and goals Behaviors. and all different things yeah it's all it's all completely canned you know there's nothing about it that's dynamic whatsoever but uh so you're just living inside of an extreme real-time 3d movie yeah basically. and it's it's just really cool you walk through it and you can you'll hear people arguing about something and kind of peek behind the door and kind of see what's going on but can't really get to them and it's it feels more like a, well, it feels more like a live Sorry. like what it's trying to be than i've seen in most games you know like they give up obviously the um we're under arrest it's true they they give up some of the systemic stuff that a lot of games try to do that with in favor of just trying to make it really, really high density. Like just keep, and, keep the atmosphere up. Exactly, yeah. Cool. And you, they, they really only exist to walk through. It's almost like Pirates of the Caribbean or something, but it, it sells it really well, I think. You'll hate it, Steve. I don't know if I would. I did see there was a you gargoyle that knocked over a truck. Yes, that happens really early in the game, early in the game actually. Um, so you're sold on I mean, that, though. That's I guess you've I determined know. it's a gargoyle. I don't know. It's some kind of monster thing. It looks like a gargoyle to me. I mean, from, like, from, from Disney's from gargoyles. TV Ooh, show it's gargoyles. like a, it's like a gray creature man with big wings that flies around. Yeah. I don't know if it's anything except a gargoyle. I, I had not that had not occurred to me, but you've opened my eyes. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Open yeah. your eyes to gargoyles. Apparently, a, a nuclear holocaust or whatever it brings gargoyles to life. <laughs> brings all the gargoyles within the blast radius to life, and they start attacking Is the that human what you were survivors. Say too? Uh, it's well documented. <laughs> there were not very many gargoyles. Is that what in... happened in the Gargoyles TV show? Yeah, that was a post-apocalyptic nuclear TV show. I don't know. What? I didn't watch. No, it, it fucking wasn't. <laughs> 
Well, what happened then? Gargoyles no, but I mean, just could come to life because of magic, and then Deanna Troy many was nuclear on. weapons detonated in metropolitan areas full of gargoyles. Right. So this but if there were, often. then because there aren't very many gargoyles in Japan. Yeah, they have Godzillas though. It's a different phenomenon, but it's related. Uh, uh, <laughs> how much do you like it? Um, I, I like it a One lot. One to ten. It's, fun factor tilt. It's it's super ultra linear in the sense, sound in the sense that uh, what's your sound score? Oh, the sound score uh, it's pretty good, I guess. I don't like, know, like an eight. Okay, I, I don't know. eight eight point point eight. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's almost a nine. Yeah. yeah. Let's round, round that up to a yeah. nine. All right, so the game has really good sound. It, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, I've seen some people don't like the mixing as much, but I'm usually not as sensitive to that, so I don't know. I'm glad you actually have things to say about the sound, <laughs> well, including I've, public people, feelings about this. People have actually argued specifically about that aspect of the game on the Idle Thumbs forums, so... Oh, well, that's why we brought it up. Weird. <laughs> you guys yeah, well, totally it's because I read that. Uh, do you, so what is the so yeah it, it is like super roller coaster right it's like ultra, it's just like it's mm, ultra linear just go yeah. forward the, the, it's like super roller coaster tycoon mm. three um, max to the max what sorry <laughs> what game are we talking about sorry. are we talking about 3ds we're, max we're, again we're ruining your talk about this uh, metro <laughs> yeah it's quite linear um it's developed by a bunch of guys who worked on the first Stalker game, right? Which makes it particularly interesting that it's so linear. Uh, yeah, it's like a reaction to working yeah, I, on Stalker from by those guys. I think basically. so. Yeah, and because uh, it has a lot in common, like fictionally and everything. Like there are anomalies and stuff, right? Right, but yeah. but because actually it's based on another Russian book, which I mean, Stalker is, is sort of inspired by uh, a work of literature, but Metro Twenty Thirty Three seems to be. Uh, and I don't even know if the if the source materials has been translated into English, but it seems like it follows it a lot more closely, which makes sense considering it's such a linear game. And there's in between one of the reasons I don't mind that it's so linear is because, well, one, it's bookended by all these cool little metro sequences that I really like, but also it's got this this uh, very overtly literary narration that that pops up. So it's the guy the game is you know in the in the same way that a, a book or a film is narrated. This is what you're playing is what the guy remembers and what he's recounting in yeah. this book that he's writing down. Mm. And so you get this little narration in between uh, the various stages of the game as the guy recounts what happened and talks about things. And so it, it makes the game almost more of a, a series of vignettes than, than a, a really kind of straight ahead narrative. Yeah. Uh, which how's, I, the, how's the shooting? What about when you shoot a mutant? Uh, it's good. It's it's. Interesting, actually. One of the things they did draw from the tradition of weird Russian uh, nonlinear games is just the fiddliness of all of the low-level systems. Yeah. So you have to do a lot of scouring for ammo. Um, you can do all kinds of manipulate all kinds of little knobs and stuff on your items. Like you, there's a. What do you mean? It applies in different ways to different to different things. So there's a like a pneumatic gun that you can fire that's kind of used as a stealthy kind of sniper weapon sort of and you can actually uh, like pump it so you can increase the pressure and so it'll fire faster when you do that um but you know after time it'll lose air pressure and then huh. you've got to do it again if you want to keep firing in that mode weird um just stuff like that there's also a uh, gas mask yeah and like the way you check your oxygen level is by looking at an in-game wristwatch that comes up and which is ticking down to how much time you know you have left until yeah, how much oxygen you have yeah. left basically or uh, no, no like I, I read about this is like filters are like yeah, the, exactly yeah the resource for it right right oh there's a cool thing Jake would like actually there's a <laughs> uh, the Let's like tell the, him about it there's a little objective screen which is not really necessary because it's so linear but you bring it up by actually bringing up a little pad in world inventory that, stuff that your guy looks at yeah thing. but the best part is. Since it's just written on paper, it's just scribbled on paper, You, your other hand can bring up a little lighter that you can flick on and the guy will hold it up to the paper. And those are both <laughs> done independently. So you can do just one or just the other or both, like whenever you want. That's my oh, favorite so you, thing. So you can pull up a lighter just to light just the Just to illuminate area. your objective when yeah. you're in the dark? And it's hilarious. Well, you don't need to because you have a flashlight on your helmet. But Lame. I mean, but it's, it's, just, it's a cool to thing to be in a dark yeah. area and yeah. just pull your lighter out. And the lighter is a cool little like, yeah. sh like unspent shell that flicks open. It's just a cool... That's my favorite thing. Like, yeah. that's it's yeah. awesome. I really liked the Far Cry 2, Far Cry 2, Far Cry 2. I liked that the map was a thing that you held. Yeah. I think that's a thing that games are starting to like yeah. and want to do. It makes me happy because... And I like it. 
I mean, I probably told this when we were talking about Far Cry 2 a lot a year ago, but my my favorite stupid moment... I only get stopped a year ago. <laughs> in, like, in the first 20 minutes of that game, I got in a Jeep and started... I pulled the map out and started looking at it and then uh, was so busy looking at the map that I drove my car into a river and yeah. was really pleased. That's yeah. the best thing. Yeah. It is good. It's like it, real it is, life. It is good. It's like all those times <laughs> It's like all the times you did that. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you text on the 101. Yeah, I guess it is like all those people who actually do do that. Yeah. But it's... they don't drive their car into rivers. Uh, Some people probably do. That's drive what I mean, actually. But I mean, like, people do stuff like that. It's in a video game. You, yeah. you don't think that that consequence is going to exist. Yeah. It's like, right. oh, fuck, wait, I was just yeah. sitting there staring at a map right. while yeah. putting my foot on the accelerator I, I of the think, car. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody who's played that game Did has, that? Has, yeah, has had that experience at least once where you're like, yeah. oh, wait, where am I going? And then you to. look up through the right. windshield and you see there's a tree. Yeah, it's really good. So, way to go, games. But you can't burn your objectives page, can you? No, you can't. That's my favorite thing. I know. I actually tried to use <laughs> like, the... Try to get the hand and yeah. the lighter to com- to collide. And well, and I tried lighting other stuff on fire with the lighter. You just, it, it doesn't do that. Oh. Yeah. It's fine. It would be terrible it's if a cool that thing. Happened. I know. It, it's... If you could... And the game's not the game is not built for that. Um, it's, you know, it's a very guided game. Yeah. But it's fun. I like it. It's cool. It's, do you, it's do cool. you shoot dudes or just mutants? Um, Both. Okay. Uh, as as in mutants pretty much dudes. As, mm, as in pretty much always. every game, I prefer when you shoot dudes. But yeah. this game also has mutants in it. I'll shoot a dude if given Can the you op- shoot dogs? opportunity. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's dog like. Can you eat their food for health? You cannot do that. Can you eat their flesh? You cannot eat their food nor their flesh. Right. No, nor. Well, that, I mean, because that was, that was a like that was a great experience. That 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 was the implied <laughs> narrative for me of like my first playthrough of fallout 3 uh-huh. was like you play through your whole life of being in this very uh you know like uh what a civilized vault you know and you're growing up and having a birthday party and everything and then all the crazy shit happens and i like talked my way out of the the vault and you know get out without killing the overseer and everything i go out and then like i'm like oh the outside world and i just like instantly go feral because like the first thing i do is run out and a dog attacks me i shoot it then loot it and take its flesh and then eat it <laughs> and so it's like this guy that he's like grown up totally normal his whole life and, and as soon as he rah! sees the sun he's like yeah. <laughs> 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 like devours a, a stray irradiated dog yeah uh i love it it was fun uh You're implications of life. systems <laughs> yeah well, because in the game, you're just very calmly just like, walk around. Oh, I put that in my inventory. Hmm. Uh, what's your third game? <laughs> um, game three. Oh, we just, have those, right? The little bumpers in between each of these. Uh, I'm going to throw true. those in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just Cause 2. We just Adam saw one. you playing that. Yeah. You can grapple. You can grapple. You can attach your you, grapple you, to you, two which different pretty things. pretty much makes it a game that I will already be interested in, because anything with the grappling hook uh half sold to begin with much yeah. like bionic commando uh yes that was not a good game but you know i appreciated that someone tried to make a game with a grappling hook it's just too bad it wasn't a good game but Re- this game this game i enjoy a lot more than that game hmm. uh hmm. i i actually had never played just cause or really known anything about it or known what it was um and the just cause 2 demo came out and a few days ago i kind of just downloaded it i saw it on steam and figured why not I'll try it out and I guess it's just a game that is basically all the stuff that you can do just dicking around in the worlds of games like GTA 4 mm-hmm. uh, that has nothing to do with missions. This game just amplifies those to a ridiculous degree and just is comprised of that. Yeah. Plus a grappling hand. Pro- yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, plus elements that allow you to, yeah. you know, plus, make Plus a grappling ho- hook and a parachute. Basically. Exactly. Pl- infinite parachutes that uh, That's good. you can dispose of. Continuously. Oh, do they get this? I, I assume you just can, retracted. Uh, you can you just deploy them. You have a parachute know, factory no. on your back. But in any case, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those games like Mercenaries or Crackdown arms. or you know. Yeah, it's yeah. similar to Crackdown in that respect, which I also really liked. Um, and you love Steve. Steve does not love. I'm not. I'm not into it. What? Nothing. I've never played Crackdown. Well. It just, just this kind of game is so undirected and just it feels like there's no consequence to anything that I'm just like it's really hard for me to care about that, d- anything yeah. I do in it you know it's just like well I am an invincible superhero ball of chaos uh, and yeah it's true that I can I am able to fuck around but like I don't feel like there's any motivation to do so for me like I, I don't get it I don't get enough of a visceral thrill out of 
look, I fucked around to like be absorbed in it for very long, you know? Yeah. But that's just my own personal, like what I'm, what I'm looking for out of that kind of game. Like I, the, the polar opposite is way more attractive to me, right. like of GTA four, where it's like, you are closer to being well, an equal really with any opposite, other, I would say. Because I mean, to me, there. I mean, I mean, you, you, you definitely are more if survivable. Like a, a structured sandbox game, like you'd prefer, you prefer when there is some element of. Because I mean, GTA well, Four, you can. I mean, the stuff you can do in GTA Four is totally ludicrous. You know what I mean? Like it's, it doesn't. There's no. But within the world, you are much closer to being an equal with any other character in that world uh, than you are in Crackdown or Just Cause. Right. Like yeah. you're you're much more fragile comparatively. You, certainly compared to those you, games. Like yes. you can't, you know, jump thirty stories, and you don't, you know, have super crazy abilities that nobody else has or anything. You you definitely. The odds are skewed in your favor, but you do have to like buy a bulletproof vest to not be killed quickly and, you know, buy a new one when it wears out and just all that kind of stuff, you know, you like right. you you get hurt and have to eat a hot dog, you know, not just like recharge <laughs> yeah. your health. Well, I don't I mean, know, just like just cause too, you don't have powers or anything, you mainly just have equipment. But you essentially do. Like for all intents and purposes, you yeah, are super by the, by the same token, you can take way more damage than anyone else in G in the world of GTA. And have amazing tar superhuman targeting. You can lock onto someone while flying through the air. I mean, you effectively have. You? Doesn't that game have locked targeting on? Locking. Yeah, but I mean, you you do not spend very much targeting on locking. locking. You don't spend much time flying through the air, though. But I mean, you you, you can do when you you're can, mean. You just go off jumps on a motorcycle yeah, all day. Well, you, I mean, you can't lock on while you're driving. You so. can jump out of a motorcycle and, and you then can't, lock on. You can't lock on while you're flying. And then you the can air. fucking grapple onto a helicopter and parachute <laughs> the fuck out of there. I don't Precisely. know. I mean, anyway. you, you can essentially act like a superhuman in GTA 4 to an extent. I mean, it's yeah, not. To, I wouldn't. To an my extent. point is that it, I don't. I wouldn't just consider the it the, is... the polar opposite. I would consider it no, but, just a few degrees, not a well, few degrees, but, but I'm saying my over own, on the spectrum. My own personal interest yeah, yeah. is the polar opposite. GTA 4 may not actually oh, be that, but it is yeah. so much closer. Right. Oh, I'd be interested to, to see to someone try existing that, yeah. as an equal to everybody else in a clockwork open world right. city. Uh, you know that it that's where my interest lies like if someone were to do that i would be totally interested in it and and that's what that that's what i like about gta 4 is that it gets closer than other games of that scope and style to that end point than yeah. really anything else has been released no i i would i totally agree with you and i would love someone to do that the thing that i don't like about gta 4 and i love gta 4 a lot don't get me wrong when i say the thing i don't like about it it's i don't everything. mean the reason i don't like it i mean There's out of a game stuff, i really yeah. like right the thing that i the thing that i don't like as much is just the huge dissonance between the really grounded cutscenes and story and the level of just utterly insane carnage you can wreak if you want like yeah because i will do that like i will just dick around and go nuts and so the make, thing, make a thousand cars explode exactly and yeah and i mean there's i mean i think there's even achievements for stuff like that like the, the yeah game there are achievements for like blow like, up 10 cars yeah. in five seconds or something and well, yeah, so the, why would they not put that in there i don't say i'm not saying they shouldn't i'm just saying that it's just reinforcement that the game systems support that yeah and so the thing the reason i like games like crackdown and just cause is because they tie that to the theme of the game they, they essentially make that like the, the world itself acknowledges that as opposed to gta where the world kind of just turns a blind eye and says we'll let you do this and then we're just going to snap back into this other thing right yeah. now because we need to for the story. And so yeah. the, the reason I like games like Crackdown and Just Cause separately, I mean, right. yeah. is, is because I, I also enjoy those interactions. And it's cool being able to do them, do them in a world where they're where it wants fully you supported. To. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like when, Steve, when you played GTA 4, at least your first time through, did you go off jumps and blow shit up or did you try to actually role play it? Oh, I, I went off jumps. Well, but, everyone goes off jumps. Right. But, I mean, but intentionally, like I'm going to go look for a ramp or whatever. But I mean, yeah, like... I was much more sympathetic to the to 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 playing the game the way that the cutscenes implied because I saw the potential for playing it that way and so I did and so yeah I was way less just like I'm going to create a massive amount of chaos between missions I I mostly went mission to mission and sort of explored the city in a more low key way between missions as opposed to like okay I finished that mission now it's my chance to explode a hundred cars and go crazy. Um, so yeah, I, I I probably enjoyed the game more on that level because I didn't really have sure. the yeah. urge to go wild because I was like, oh man, I can actually keep myself to some degree in this you know aesthetic state right. because I'm able to maintain that if I want to. So I kind of did, you know? right, right, right. Yeah. No, that, that totally makes sense. For for me, it always ends up being a function of 
like my energy level at any given time. Like paradoxically, when I'm uh, maybe not paradoxically, actually, this happens with a lot of games. But when I'm feeling less focused and less driven, that's when I'll turn into just Destructo Man. Yeah. yeah. Basically, like I'll be relaxing. I'll be like, yeah. I'll be tired. I'll mash. Car. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, and it's and it's I've always found that really interesting because um, open world stuff and sort of emergent gameplay in general is predicated a lot more on just kind of the breadth of player input. But for me, at least, and probably for a lot of people, it, it ends up corresponding with the player being less concerned with the inputs. And so those things end up magnifying each other for just chaos. Well, yeah, basically. it's just when you, when you don't want to be precise, when you just sort of want to yeah. smash things and see yeah. what they crash into, that's, yeah. you know, when you find all that weird shit. Yeah. And, and Red Faction Guerrilla is sort of the same. Actually, Just Cause 2 reminds me of, of Red Faction Guerrilla for different reasons. There's nothing dynamically destructible in Just Cause. There's tons of stuff to blow up, but it's all scripted in there yeah but it's, it's, it's either blown up or not exactly yeah. yeah but but that it does have that same thing where there are mission objectives to do and you can sort of do them while just wreaking havoc in in the most outrageous way <laughs> uh, but it's fun i mean the, the you can i didn't play just cause one but from from everyone who's who have seen talking about it it seems like they really learned a lot because i think they tried a lot of the crazy interactions that they've now figured out to a better degree. I mean, mm -hmm. just, just crazy shit. Like you can just fly out of cars whenever you want into your parachute and grapple onto something and get in, get lock, get into these cycles of grappling and then parachuting. And it, the thing that I, I love about stuff like that is, is not so much necessarily that I'm blowing stuff up like that. That's fun to kind of just do idly. But the thing that is always so appealing to me about games like this is that you can get in a, in a really, you can get really in tune with the game's how it lets you explore spaces. Like that's what I really liked about Crackdown, and that's what I weirdly liked about Trine. Like they're games that allow Trine. you to, to take some mechanics and string them together in ways that allow you to navigate a space really fluidly. Mm. And re like Spider-Man games did that really well, for yeah. example. Stuff like that is extremely appealing to me, and that's why I like Grappling Hook so much yeah. because they're they're almost entirely intended to facilitate that. I wonder if that goes hand in hand with the sort of person who likes jumping. Uh, perpetually in, a, in yeah. a game that's supposed to yep. just be a running game. Pretty much, I like jump if, a lot. If, I wonder if that's like because you probably don't do that, Steve. No, not really. But you, Chris, I know yeah. are just like hop, 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 yep. hop, hop, hop. Like you and I both played Psychonauts just on the fucking ball, exactly. bouncing at right. full, I loved full that force that ball. through every yeah. level until you got to a point where you had to not do that or you die. Yeah. No, essentially, I just really love kineticism in games. Like I love movement and like any mechanics dealing with that. And yeah. so, yeah, I I will try a lot of different games that support that and a lot of them aren't good but some of them yeah. are and then i'm happy yeah see i mean i because i love games where the default is to be as like low-key as possible right. like that that's what i like about for instance since we're on the like gta 4 your default mm -hmm. movement is walk and you have to hold down a right to run and you have to tap yeah, a to sprint to yeah. sprint yeah. and it's like we are actually going to just like softly discourage you from right. trying to act crazy in this world and like you're going to default to walking around like a normal person and you actually actually have to work to kind of like break out of the expectations of the rest of the crowd and everything uh yeah oh so. i liked i love that gta 4 did that but yeah i also will happily play a game that lets me do all sorts of stupid shit like yeah, wall, yeah. wall jumping and grappling all over the fucking place yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I guess i feel like on some level it it works less well for me when it is in a semi-realistic world, you know, like Just Cause 2 takes place in some analog to what, like Thailand or something like yeah, that? Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah. And like Mercenaries takes place in, I think actually Mercenaries Venezuela, 2 takes I place believe. in Venezuela. Yeah. yeah, and just stuff like that. And it's like, if, if your game is all about these pretty abstract, exaggerated verbs, I would, I would rather enjoy them in a, a much more fictionalized world. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I liked... Act, like flipping my hot rod off of stuff a lot in brutal legend because it was crazy metal world you right. know but like I, that makes sense i can see that if it was supposed to be an actual place it would kind of be like well this is not anything like an actual place because this fucking crazy hot rod guy would not be right. doing backflips you know in this real place that makes yeah. sense it's i guess for me it sort of ends up possibly coincidentally coinciding with me just really loving huge detailed gorgeous landscapes like in yeah. the same way that I like, you know, nature photography and like the film kind of Scotsy and stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like those things may not be for the same reason, but I, I like when a game will allow me to be on a parachute, like in Just Cause 2, for example, and just soar over this beautiful island that it yeah. just looks like a real thing in our world. No, I think, um, I, and I think that's totally, I, I really like that as well. I, I was, 
I, I, I love being able to see the entire city or right. the entire XYZ. Uh, super impressive. I mean, like getting up on a ridge in Fallout 3 and just seeing right. the whole wasteland out yeah, in front yeah, yeah. of you. Yeah, just that stuff is great. It's wonderful. Yep, scale in games is good. Sweet. People so, having a sweet <clears throat> game engine. How about the fourth game? Since we're just going down this list. Oh, yeah. Four. I don't even know if there are actually four. I think there might even be more than that. But um, Jesus, Chris. Are we going to unlock a fifth game at the end of this you number can four? Try. Uh, <laughs> what does well, that you can mean? try your hand at unlocking a game. Um, no, I played Shatter. The Master which, of Unlocking? Uh, what? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was killed for saying Master of Unlocking. Oh, man. I didn't even realize what you said. That's okay. Now I know. Um, I played Shatter, which is... Uh, what Ugh. i don't know i don't know anything about this game <laughs> it's Ugh. a it's a puzzle game that's ostens- ost- <laughs> ostensibly kind of in the music rhythm puzzle genre like oh. Luminex. Oh. <laughs> you guys are horrible uh i apologize that's fine i don't i do oh yeah, that's good mm. you break blocks to, you break blocks to solve yeah. the puzzle and it's pretty fun i played it for a couple hours but wow. It um it came out on Steam and people said it was good and I I like games that are good sort of rhythmically based well that puzzle games with rhythm stuff in them what's the what's the word for it I don't even really know I don't know yeah, if it's you actually do. a term no I mean the the word like res where they sync up your action the sounds of your actions with a beat oh um well they don't in this game unfortunately oh, okay. but it's um um quantization quantization uh okay. th- but they don't in this game it would right. it would be difficult since it's it's entirely due to just you know simulating physics on when the ball hits your paddle it's yeah. entirely doo-doo you did say that it is it is poop you know? <laughs> it's, it's 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 a pretty good game but it wasn't it didn't I don't blow know. Your mind. it doesn't seem like i could play it indefinitely basically yeah. which is what you kind of look for in a game like this pretty much and it i you look for a year of your life being ex- slugged exactly, the drain yeah, to right exactly yeah medios <laughs> was definitely that for me as was luminous and there, there's um, a game that i played that i think has quantization in it that you also played which was chime yeah, that game's re- that's actually a really good game. Chime, it was, it was cool. you want yeah, to talk about it? Yeah, sure. It's it's a uh, yeah. Chime is the first game that was released by that company called One Big Game, which like donates a lot of their proceeds from the game that yeah, they make. All, all uh, profits actually. They're a nonprofit company. Yeah, yeah, and it was something like uh, when you buy it, it says like something like sixty percent of the proceeds or of the what you're paying. Price, yeah. yeah, it goes to charity, but um. It's a it's a it's a pretty interesting game where essentially there's I don't know it's it's sort of like Tetris meets Luminous like it has elements of of both of those but then I don't actually know how to just, you know so anyway uh you have a board that's empty and uh, they they give you shapes that are kind of like more complex Tetris shapes like a tetramino I don't know um pretty sure that's what it's called but uh but it's there, there's there's music playing in the background that's very simplistic and you put down these pieces on the board to make quads that are like i guess i think the smallest one is like three by three and when you get a quad it fills up that part of the board permanently and your goal is to place these complex shapes and arrangements that make these solid uh fields and then fill up the entire board by the end and <clears throat> the more quads you've put down the more layers of the background music play and cool. they're, they're, the quantization is that like luminous there's this like you know kind of beam that sweeps yeah. over it and and like a timeline so. yeah and and counts off the pieces that you've turned into quads like as it passes them and those sounds uh work into the song and they have songs by like uh philip glass and moby and the one that I like the best is the one that's in the demo. Oh, the Wizard by Chris Raymond. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, man, I was really pleased they put that in there. Yeah, well, because you get, like, a big quad, and it just goes, Wizard. Yeah, you know, it's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, so you should buy that because it's an Idle Thumbs game. They made a yeah. game about Idle Thumbs. Yeah. What was the song you actually liked? Uh, by Orbital. That's right. Mm. Uh, Not as good as The Wizard. No. But kind of good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and I played it, and I was like, this is really interesting. Uh, you can play with a time limit or not just to see how much you can fill it up. And I was like, this has a lot of things in it that it seems like this would be Chris Remo's favorite game. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's quite good. I enjoyed it. We, I, I, they, it's music-based, uh, it's puzzle-based, and it has quantization, which is like right. a thing that you love. I do love it. And it has Philip Glass and other... Exactly, and I really like the it. Philip Glass track, yeah. Sweet. It's cool. What it's were your cool impressions game. of it? Uh, I liked it. I I, uh, I totally forgot that it came out when it came out. Um, so I haven't actually bought it yet, but I, I have played it for a few hours. Um, they came, they brought it to our office last year before uh, it came out yeah. and, uh, 
and it's really cool. Yeah, I, I played it because I heard it. I saw a few different people online saying they had been playing it and they liked it, and so I tried the demo and it had that one orbital track on it, and I was like, oh, I like this song, and this is a pretty fun game. Uh, the Insta buy. I bought it. I put my dollars in it. Oh man. Uh, it, it it has a little bit of a weird like the feeling of progression is strange. Like you know, have you played? Yeah, you, know, you, have you. I guess you've only played the demo. No, I played the full game. Uh, oh, but when they brought it to your office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's like you can play it with these different time limits, and it judges you on right, how yeah. much you fill up before the time limit ends. But, like, I don't know. The the actual goals to shoot for are not, like, super clear or compelling. No, it's just sort of like you can play it, yeah. and if you want to play it, you can play it. It's just kind of like, okay, that's well, cool. Well, yeah, they, they, were, and they, they were saying that they found that different people pick up on that stuff to very different degrees. Like the the person that they found to be the best, you know, the, the the best runs they saw were from a guy who was a programmer and was able to just quickly in his head think of all the ways these things could fit together and just really quick quickly slam them down there yeah. uh, before the timeline would come across. And and I guess this because it, it is abstract in that respect. It's hard to it's hard to get your head around exactly what you're working for on the kind of low level. Yeah. Uh, but, but also, it's, they but have it's a pretty, fun to play. Yeah, but they they also have a pretty low bar for progression, where it's exactly like, yeah. <clears throat> you right. have to clear fifty percent of the board yeah, to get the next doable. thing, yeah. and then you unlock them all, and then it's sort of like, I don't know why I keep playing this, except just I like to put the right. blocks on the area yeah. and hear the music, yeah, <laughs> uh, which is fine. Uh, it's just not super compelling. It's just nice. Yeah, exactly, I it's, enjoy it's a it. thing you just kind of do, and just yeah, have, yeah. I, I, there have been a few times since I bought it that I was just like, oh, you know, I do f kind of feel like playing a video game, but not one that I actually want to have to like care about a whole lot and i'll just play this for 10 minutes and have a nice song right and it's nice it's good yep sweet what yeah. kind of breaks do you guys like do you like breaks from podcasts i do yeah i'm giving you one now oh thanks Steve. Video games. we didn't play metro 2033 or starcraft 2 that's your problem right there fair I'll, enough i'll play metro 2033 you, yeah, you should you might like it i would play it you hate it yeah, I didn't mean you I would. Play I don't it. know if you necessarily wouldn't like it. Fine. I just mean between the two of you, it's probably yeah. more likely Jake's kind of game. I mean, but... the the thing is, I like things like that when they're really good. Right. I, I liked the Call of Duty Four campaign because it was just right. really well done and sure. enjoyable for what it was. Just a lot of times, people are like, "All right, we're gonna lock you onto this roller coaster track, and it's not actually gonna be that interesting, but you can't actually do anything except right. this." Right. I'm like, "That's a bad idea." <laughs> uh, so you really have to nail it. But if you do it, then you know, Maybe they I'm did. into it. Maybe I mean, it sounds like it has enough weird, low-level, just kind of what what are when you guys you doing mechanics? Have weird knobs, pumps, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like metaphorical yeah. Yeah. levers and pumps and knobs that you can. Just which yeah. which are your which shit. are not actually metaphorical. You actually yeah, have a pump on them and you pump it. Yeah, well, no, there's all kinds of actual like. Literally, they animated all these cool little mechanical things where you right, will you will take your gun and the guy will like lift it up and you'll like click the mouse and he'll go chunk and he'll do it at the number of times you yeah. click like stuff like that is awesome. Oh, it sounds sweet. Yeah. yeah, not obviously some guns are just a pistol and nothing happens to what, it. What it needs but... to have at least one. Modifier. Oh, and then there's this guy. I didn't even talk about the money system. That's really fascinating. Go ahead and talk whatever, about it. it. Doesn't matter. Well, tell us about it. Yeah, it's uh like the currency in the game like. It's linear, and you can never go back to somewhere. Yeah. But all the bases have um, merchants. What yeah. Are you doing? What are you? I don't know. Twitched. You just said all the base, and I was going to say oh, our belongings. All the bases. This was yeah. you erasing that thought from your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, get it out of there. Yeah, exactly. I was trying um, to shake our belong to us out of my ear and right. make it fly into your apartment, and um, hide under the couch. Our belong to us. <laughs> that was, was, that was, was that escaping? Was yeah. forcing its way out? Yes. Um, so yeah, money system. Yeah. Oh, so there's merchants that you can buy, you know, weapons and health and ammo from, but the actual, the currency is ammo. Yeah. The currency is this, is pre-war ammo basically that is clean and well manufactured as opposed to ammo after the war or whatever, well, I don't even remember whatever it was, that's shitty and kind of cobbled together. And you can use that ammo in your actual guns. And so. And it's more effective. It's way more effective. It's it's actually effective. You know, your other your other ammo is just it's, it's shitty stuff that you spray out basically. Yeah. Um, and you don't realize that until you get sweet ammo. Yeah. You you start out with it. You start out with some of the good ammo because it is your money, and so the game yeah. starts you off with a certain quantity of money. And so I I didn't spend any of it at first when I was in the first location because you don't have enough of it really to get anything good. So I'm like, I'll just hang on to this, 
and then I didn't use any of it in the first battle. And I finally, at the end of, I don't know, the second segment or third segment of the game or something, I, um, I, uh, we'd gotten to a safe house area and the guys weren't letting us in because all these mutants started pouring out and attacking us and they didn't want to open the doors. And so, you know, as in many video games, you have to fight off these waves of guys before you can keep going. Yeah. And, uh, I had run out until I had until I had no regular ammo left. And so I brought out my knife, which you always have. Yeah. And, you know, with all my memories of Stalker in my head, I'm like, oh, man, knife knives cut through mutants like fucking nothing. This is going to yeah. be a cinch. Uh, that's not true in this game. <laughs> that might be true in Stalker, but not so much Metro 2033. Uh, a knife actually acts more like how it probably would act in this situation. And um, not be exceptionally just, effective. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, God, stab, stab, stab. And, like, they will fuck you up, you know, right. while you're trying to do that. And so I'm like, oh, God, this is horrible. And so I switched over to the um, I switched over to the gold ammo, like the good ammo, which is bright and shiny and very noticeable. Yeah. And, uh, like, you just, you know, these guys go down like nothing when you fire this stuff into them. But the counter is you're basically firing you're, money. You're shooting like, dollars at you them. Are, yeah, exa- you are ejecting money out of your gun. It's yeah. horrible. Like, you're doing it and you're like, oh, this is great. These guys are going down so easy. Oh, this is horrible. All my money. I'm pissing it away through the barrel of this gun. This is <laughs> awful. Uh, it's a really interesting That, that kind of decision sounds fun. It's I mean, really it sounds cool. interesting yeah, to me. It's a, it's a really good, de- it's a very cool decision. They're actually, I should have talked well, I mean, more making about that this decision. game in a more interesting way. You are doing of, it now. Well, I guess I'm doing it now. But, um, I've had some I had some amazing moments in this game like there's a uh, there's I've I mentioned the uh, the ice maker out in the I mentioned hall. my weird apartment noises uh, your robot pal my uh, big, comes out big when you're dog asleep. your big dog <laughs> he only comes out when he's asleep <laughs> oh, <terrible. laughs> it's a big dog <laughs> That's what he says. Oh, it it's a big like, dog. It's, it's, it's me. It's a big dog. Turn it on. It's big dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's shooting paintballs at me. No, oh, I can't hide. <laughs> he's made of bees. Uh, so yeah, what was um, the moment? Okay, so I um, this is actually I have not played the game since this happened. Uh, I uh, I was in some area. It was actually the one of the first times you're out on the surface instead of in the metro yeah. stations, other than the very beginning of the game, and. Uh, I was kind of with a buddy. We were an NPC buddy. We we're going around, and we get separated. He makes it across this chasm, and I don't. And I've got to find another way around. And I, I was just kind of digging around. Like even in linear games, I usually try to push the boundaries of exploration as far yeah. as possible, just because it's what I do. And I was not really paying any attention to how much to my filters as they were running low in my mask. And I suddenly started like after it was happening so slowly that i didn't realize for a while and i suddenly started to notice the things were kind of getting blurry at the edges and things were kind of getting soft and i'm like oh man what's going on here and then i realized my guy's breathing was audible and i was hearing it and, I, and i'm like oh god i'm probably running out of shit and i look at my watch and i'm almost out I'm like oh fuck this is bad and i start going around and and i start running and jumping and trying to get anywhere that i can to scavenge for more I'm filters running out of so I, started running and I know exactly <laughs> i started panicking and and like it it starts getting really extreme. Your guy starts, you know, my guy started breathing really heavily and panting, and his vision was becoming really cloudy. And then I, as I was going into this, um, I don't know if it was inside or just kind of a a garage like area. Yeah. I went into this bit and I I saw this blurry shape in the darkness kind of move and i'm like oh fuck what is that and then out of this mutant comes charging out of nowhere at me and i'm like oh fuck and at this point i could see almost nothing like it was it was my my guy was basically losing his vision entirely yeah. and just go, <gasps> it was it horrible it was awful and <laughs> i bring out my gun and i just spray bullets everywhere completely haphazardly and the, the mutant dies and i'm like it was such a horrible moment of like a bittersweet victory over this this opponent because I had I had put down this enemy, but my guy at this point is basically scraping along, and he just at a certain point when you have no filters left, your guy will just rip off the gas mask and just gasp for air, even though there's no breathable air there. Yeah, and so I basically I just slowly asphyxiated and just died <laughs> on the spot after Jesus. killing this mutant, and it was easily easily one of the most harrowing, terrifying, panic-inducing moments I've had in a video game because they sell it so well with the vision going and the yeah. guy 
panting and breathing and and everything constricting no, and it sounds amazing it sounds it is incredible it, it sounds literally nightmarish like yeah, that is a it, nightmare it that someone horrible. would definitely have yes and then which i is awesome. at that point i basically hit alt f4 and quit to my desktop <laughs> immediately and and have not loaded the game since then because it was it was fucking nuts and in fact since then i took a day off work last week after gdc and um uh this was at last friday um and I was going to load the game up because I had some free time, and I'm like, all right, I'll play the Metro 2033, whatever the game is, number. And But it was a nice day out. It Finally, the weather got better after GDC's ridiculousness. And it was, like, bright outside, and it was daytime, and I'm like, I can't, I can't play this game right now. You can't right go to now. the Russian wasteland. Is, yeah, and I couldn't bring myself to do it. I yeah. had my mouse, like, hovering over it on the Steam thing, and I'm like, this is just not yeah. going to work. Yeah. I'm going to asphyxiate myself while a mutant. Yeah, and so I, yeah. I need to, I, I can't wait to go back and play some more, but that that was definitely an experience that impacted me yeah. so much that it made me only want to play the game yeah. when I could, like, enhance that yeah. experience. Well, I mean, you're, you're hovering your mouse cursor over the the yeah, icon just outside the window you're just hearing like robins chirping exactly, yeah. <laughs> and just a sunbeam kind of goes right. are you sure window. you want to enter your worst nightmare <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe i'll go outside and then do yeah. that later <laughs> exactly yeah so so it was cool i i enjoyed that experience yeah. even though it was horrible all right i'll play it okay sold <laughs> you owe chris a check russian men yeah 4a games Oh, also, it's funny. This game seems to be displacing Crisis as finally the new game people are using to push like blow crazy systems. Yeah. Oh, really? I mean, it seems quite it scalable. Seem like, like really? Because it doesn't seem like it has crazy good graphics, does it? It it basically it's not as overt as Crisis, and it's definitely a very very scalable game. Um, you don't actually need a ridiculous computer to run it, but it has unlike a lot of multi platform games because it's on three sixty as well. It has if you want, absurdly high-resolution textures on the PC, which is really nice because these days a lot of PC games just ship with, like, console-resolution textures, and they just did not scale any of that shit back on the PC if you if you actually turn all the graphics up. And so you can turn this game into just a completely computer-destroying beast <laughs> that actually looks pretty amazing. Like, some of the screenshots people have taken where they just pumped everything up to maximum. Yeah. Like, it's one of those games where you can take screenshots and be like, Jesus, the background of this is a painting. Yeah. You know, like, it, it ha they're... It's harder to tell because you don't get those big vistas like Crisis has, yeah. but it's kind of know, the indoor equivalent yeah, of that. I don't almost. even know how people get those Crisis screenshots, because, like, I don't even think if I turned everything up to max and was running at one frame per second, I think Crisis actually like has, this. like, a, a mode that is just, it, like, one step closer to impossible mode, basically, yeah. where it will just go... I mean, you, you like go, those people also use mods to, well, like, can, have, like, modded lighting that looks better than the shipping lighting. There are, there are mods that people have actually just made, but there are also just config files. Like, oh, you can okay. go and just push stuff to an even more extreme degree mm. by editing just some config files in the game and just yeah, really cranking stuff. You can, you can stuff. just enable system ruination yeah. Through, yeah. through text files. But so at ruin. this point, people are now, like, modding... Actually, I just saw the other day someone's crazy, um, like, particle mod for Crisis that just replaces the particle effects for explosions and stuff to just amazingly realistic extents. People are still doing interesting things to that, that yeah. game and engine. It's cool. I was just, I was playing some game recently that had really impressive, like, real-time, you know, light rays coming yeah. through trees and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I think it was something that, I can't remember what the fuck it was, but I was, like, impressed because... It was Tropico 3. Mm. Oh, that game does have nice rays coming through. Yeah, it things. does. Does it? Yeah. yeah. When do you see them? Uh, you well, Like, when the sun is setting and rising, if you look out over the tree line, you yeah. actually oh. has, like, in the haze is, real, yeah. is done in real time. It's a really weird, surprisingly impressive yeah. effect well, to pop up. One of my favorite things to do in city building games like that is to zoom in the camera and then angle it out more horizontally so you yeah. can kind of look over your, your civilization or city or whatever laterally. Yeah. And then at that point, in Tropico 3, especially if it's dusk, yeah. you get these amazing light rays kind of pouring over your city. It's awesome. I think, I think it might have actually been the Just Cause 2 demo. Just Cause 2 has amazing light ray yeah. stuff. And I think I was really impressed. Amazing I, rays. <laughs> amazing rays. Well, I played it on 360, so I think I was extra impressed that they had that, that level your 360 of 360 like, was making amazing yeah. rays? Yeah, like That's the technical volumetric term for lighting. Those. Amazing rays? Yeah, it's yeah. amazing rays, uh, discount volumetric light rays. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Uh, no, the game sounds really cool. Yeah, it's a cool game. I hope it actually does well, because no one's game. talking about it, really. Is it a game gold? Gold, gold game? Um... <laughs> and you know also i want i've heard people talking about it but it's been on the internet and in a video game development office right so. yeah 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 
it's also not like you know um steve you mentioned you're you know you're you're happy to play a game that's super linear if it's of the quality of for example call of duty modern warfare or whatever this game is not as like there are a lot of things about this game that are not perfect you know what i mean it's not but it sounds like, like it, a hugely it, super but it does sound like it makes up for those with other weird interesting off the things beaten path and, yeah things for that, sure exactly you which, know, is, which i love so. yeah i mean i'm interested in stuff like that where it's like we're gonna do yeah weird pumpable weapons yeah. and like heavy you know the 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 spaces you're talking about that have all the npc crowds yeah. and stuff like that um yeah it sounds worth checking out for sure yep cool so we're gonna take a real break now yeah Right. Oh, I thought we were going to read her mail. Yeah, but we have to well, actually have to do that. find them. Oh, you guys, I thought you had them. Video games! Oh, they're picked out. Ready? Steve. Farewell. We'll be back after this break. <laughs> Video games! God damn it. We all have beards. That's gross. Sorry, Steve. There shouldn't be three bearded men all speaking into microphones at the same time. Well, it's the beard cast. Yeah, who here beard is, cast confirmed? Who here is best without a beard? Who's had their beard the longest? I've had my beard since two thousand two. All right. I don't remember, but probably about then. Your beard comes on. Yeah, you off. share. Yeah. You shave your beard off sometimes, though, so you can't even count as that. But I've probably had the most extreme beard out of anyone in this room. That may be true. Could be true. Yeah, I've had my beard probably since about the same time you have. You should shave your beard because that would be amusing to me. I yeah, I, I, like I do I do occasionally shave it, but really? like, well, I shave it specifically. Then you hide from us for two weeks. <laughs> I, I I shave it like once a year to put on face paint for Dia de los Muertos. Uh -huh. So you've seen pictures of me without my beard, yeah, but yeah, I have a skull face. face. Right now, uh, so. You have other shit on your face instead. <laughs> I want to see you with no shit on your face. You're gonna have shit on your removed. face. Yeah. You get a poop on it? <laughs> that was the implication. Oh, man. So yeah. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, near podcast. Yes, oh. yeah. Wow. Thumbs. Speaking of thumbs. So that was the What You've Been Playing segment. Now it's time for reader mail. <laughs> also, though, first, um, we, uh, Jake and I at least are going to be at PAX this week. Yeah, we have a surprise edition of Chris Ramo. At PAX East. Yeah, I'm going to go there. This I weekend. will definitely not be there. Steve hates PAX. Mm, yes. I don't know if you give a shit about PAX either way, but I've you never, hate it the most. I've never been to a PAX or anywhere near it. Well, Chris and I are gone. For good reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I'm not allowed. Oh, man, you're not allowed to go to PAX. <laughs> they banned me from it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Even after never having been there? Yeah. They preemptively banned well, you Well, why do PAX? you think I've never been there? Uh, well. well, the first one was called the Penny Arcade Expo, colon... Steve Gaynor is not welcome at this event. <laughs> it was a weirdly the cumbersome was set. title. Yeah. Was if you look at the small print on your ticket, it says it on the back. Um, so you guys are going, though. Yeah. We so go if, there. if anyone listening to this is going, we might have some sort of get-together thing, the most informal one possible. Uh, we don't know what day or time it would be. Except that you have to wear a black tie. That's yeah, true. You can wear any other clothes, but a, a tie that is black is required. Yeah. Yeah. In all other ways, it's completely informal. Yeah, but we'll nothing but a black tie. We'll post something on. <laughs> for <the> example, <laughs> you are setting yourself up for a bad situation, <laughs> friend. Yeah, we don't know what it is or when or whatever, but it'll probably just be us going to a bar or something super yeah. awesome like we'll, that. We'll post it on a blog, our blog, um, idlethumbs.net, the website yeah. blog, and maybe on a Twitter. I think you will on a Twitter. On a forum, maybe. I think you will on a Twitter, a forum, and a blog. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for committing to something you have no involvement in. <laughs> And the Idle Thumbs Facebook page. I forgot that exists. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get this out virally through the social Also, networking. we're going to update the voicemail message on 555 <laughs> Wizard Off. In fact, it will only be. Oh, you mean 55 Y Aremo? Or whatever yes, that is? That will be the only venue through which we announce. The <laughs> <laughs> to find the date and time, call 1 900 55 Y Aremo. <laughs> that will launch an ARG. <laughs> Yeah, log into the Idle Thumbs what, The most nerdy person will show up for this <laughs> and nobody else. I decoded your slow scan television signal. <laughs> it's, it said wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I deduced you meant the wizard's uh, lair. A bar. <laughs> 18 miles out of Boston. <laughs> you weren't there, though. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, sweet arg. I'm 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 gonna go to a bar called the Wizard's Lair. Yeah. I went to a bar on the Oregon coast called the Ghost Hole. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, it was a karaoke bar. It was surreal. That reminds me, someone made a website of one of last week's or two weeks ago Brecken and one of our jokes. Yeah, there's a, if you go to breckenbindburn.com. Oh, bo- oh, I thought it wasn't I thought it was Boost Bindburn. <laughs> well, it's Nick Brecken and Boost Bindburn. <laughs> Attorneys at law. Attorneys oh, I at see. law. <laughs> I want to go to this site now. So if you it's go a to, good it's a good site. Is it and Brecken I, and Bindburn? No, I think it's breckenbindburn.com. And they, right. this the reason it reminded me of this is because this law firm is apparently located in Wizard, Colorado. <laughs> Yeah, you sent me that URL, and I just sort of gave it a passing glance. I was like, oh, man, what a hilarious name for a law firm. It's like the sort of thing we would say on Adolf Thumb. <laughs> and then, yeah, failure. like five minutes later, I was like, yeah, anyway, I forgot about this joke entirely. And you were like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, look at this. All this text is about wizards and shit. <laughs> so it's good. Someone made a good website. I don't even know who it was, but uh, someone made it. Um, anyway, PAX. We're going to post something on our website about going to PAX and being at PAX and maybe having a beer at PAX. All right. And maybe you can do that with us. PAX, PAX, PAX. And maybe if a couple <laughs> people show up, we will talk to you and go and get a drink. And that's about and it. And Chris we is decided. going to actually get, do a live performance of The Wizard and the fanboys lament. <laughs> I will have no instruments on me. Bring your guitar. <laughs> fans <laughs> for Chris Remo to play and live. If you bring a kazoo, that would be acceptable. Yeah, that would also be Well, acceptable. because then Jake will help out. Right. Well, it has to be a baboo kazoo. <laughs> Nobody knows what that means. I know. We almost made uh, Idle Thumbs co-branded kazoos for PAX last year, but it was too expensive. Yeah, the baboo the time. Kazoo. We almost brought baboo kazoos. <laughs> um, so I like the, hearing about them. There's, yeah. yeah, so there's that. Um, there's also a mail from There reader. are some mails. Also, just as a side uh, note, uh, I, we get a lot of more mail than we used to now so if i don't read your mail um it's possible it's because it was bad but it's more likely it's just because we get a ton of mail now so yeah we don't know what that's about because we stopped doing the podcast for like three months and that made more people write in it made more well there was you know so much time went without questions being answered that when we came back there was a flood that that, yeah the the big old hatch open and then just email deluge we, we we had a relaunch it up the profile. Then we had to close it again, but Nick was still in there. It was too late, though, because uh, that bulkhead had flooded. He's dead. So we drowned so, Nick. He's trapped in there with a whole bunch of sweet reader mail, though. Oh, okay. So maybe if we keep reading reader mail... Uh, Nick will escape? Nick, Nick will escape. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Wait. Moving on. So are you Zach saying they Johnson have to stop writes, writing reader mail? So that... We don't know what we're saying. <laughs> no. Jack, Zach Johnson writes, Save hey guys, Nick. Don't write any I more questions listening. on idlethumbs.net. <laughs> He's going to drown if you write us an email. And that'll be on you. The readers. Well, let's, let's get some of that let's get some of that re- reader mail out of the chamber, man. We got to save <laughs> right, his ass. Okay, okay. So as I was saying, Jack, the mail chamber? Zach yeah. Johnson writes, Tweaking randomness. Hey, guys. I was listening to the GDC Grenade and wanted to bring up something I find interesting about the notion of altering randomness in games to improve the player experience. In our game, Kingdom of Loathing, although you don't have to mention it to avoid having it sound like a plug, uh, I just mentioned it. We do a lot of this, he says. We refer to it as massaged randomness. We tweak values in ways that we think improve the feel of the game, prevent randomized events from becoming streaky or repetitive, flatten out curves to stop a small portion of players from experiencing a boring long tail, that kind of thing. There's a danger, though, that when players learn the methods we use for these tweaks, they'll start doing weird shit to take advantage of them, and that makes it even harder to balance everything. It can create a situation where the optimal way for a player to do something is tedious or time-consuming or heavy on bookkeeping, but usually it just ends with players doing things that don't make any narrative sense. If a Civ-type game made, made it more likely for you to win a battle after you lost one, I can imagine shrewd players taking advantage of this by fighting unimportant battles until they lost one, then fighting an important one when they know the game is stacking the odds a little more in their favor. It's not a big deal playing against the computer, but it seems like a bullshit move in multiplayer. Uh, also, the reward punishment framing decision, buy one, get one free, afterwards, reminded me of a joke my dad made years ago. He suggested that Circle K should change its coffee slogan from, tastes great or it's free, to, tastes like shit or you have to pay for it. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, no, I, thought, I think that's an interesting email. And actually, I Civ, Civilization Revolution, I actually felt, was kind of broken in that respect. Um, I think they went a little overboard on that stuff. And uh, the th- specific thing he mentions, fighting a uh, a less important battle before fighting an important one, I actually did that in Civilization Revolution huh. a lot because I, I had started to perceive how that system worked over time. So yeah, it, it that game was not as kind of pure asive as other ones, but yeah. it was still fun. There's one major instance of that that I know of from knowing how the systems work in Bioshock 2. Oh, yeah? 
I'm not gonna mention it. Oh. If you know what I'm talking, if if because well, 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 no, because the thing is, I don't know if people have actually divined it, uh, and I don't really want to r- ruin that part of the game for people. Yeah. But I'd be interested to know if people actually noted this thing that I know as being a degenerate strategy. If you see through it, it's pretty freaking like obscure to actually i think be able to tell without seeing the numbers but i don't know i'm, I'm probably going to look online and see yeah. if this thing that i'm thinking like, of has been found or not there's a thing in tf2 uh where people would shoot themselves in the face as a soldier repeatedly to so that the medic would give them an uber quicker oh yeah because and then valve originally and then they designed around that right i think that's still in i don't really know because i don't ever play a soldier or medic i think what they did is because people would always do it at the beginning of the game before the round yeah, started, Yeah, in the right? setup time. They're just, yeah. they're just soldiers shooting at the ground. Or th- I think Valve made it so that at, for that period of time, or, I, I, people who actually play this game more regularly will... I don't actually know I, I'll back. be an idiot for not knowing it. But I, they did of, something yeah. so that you don't need to do that to get Uber by the time the gates open. Like, Valve saw people were doing that and made it so that you can just get there without having to abuse it, basically. Which so, is smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Um, stuff like that happens in games. <laughs> da, da, da. Jonathan too writes my mom dear idle thumbs I showed plants vs. zombies to my mom a few months ago and she really liked it she plays it 15 hours a week on my steam account and the Steve looks quizzical 15 hours a week yeah that's a lot of them yeah and the, the most that's hours I have hours on any other game are Freedom Force Half-Life 2 and Peggle at 20 hours each she has now played plants vs. zombies for 170 hours on my account Jesus. and refuses to buy it on her own account uh, until it goes on sale. <laughs> Sometimes I would be sitting upstairs on my computer, that go downstairs like for 30 seconds to use the bathroom or get my cell phone, and when I got back, she'd be on my computer because she was lying in wait. She has her own computer. Also, people think I'm, <laughs> people think I'm weird for playing Plants vs. Zombies 13 times longer than I've played Team Fortress 2 because <laughs> Steam tracks that publicly. Um, Buy your mom a gift well, this Freaking is what he's, he gets to this. I told Freaking my mom that, that she plays games more than I do, and she didn't believe me. Finally, I went through my entire catalog of 50 Steam games, sh- listing how many hours I've played to her. Once she saw that in the few months she's, she has played Plants vs. Zombies uh, for more hours than I have in the entire two years of my Steam account, she said she wouldn't play on my Steam account anymore and seemed upset. Now I feel like an asshole. Should I buy her the game so I won't feel like an asshole? Yes! Or, or not, and reduce her addiction? Or no. should I buy her some other game? Your mom obviously has like an emptiness in her life that she has to fill with something. <laughs> so I think you should, you know, give her the game. Fill Let her be happy. Yeah. Let your mom be happy. Or just throw her for a loop and get her a copy of Cogs. I just thought I'd recommend some other game. So Jake, Jake recommends Cogs. Steve uh, recommends letting your mother be happy, Jonathan. So <laughs> take either of those pieces of advice. Cogs or happiness. <laughs> It's up to you. John writes, Seg, gentlemen of the Idle Thumbs podcast podcast. What the fuck is up with your pronunciation of Segway? Is it an in-joke that I'm missing out on? Yes, it is. It's from me two years ago. Yes. Get with the fucking times. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he includes a pronunciation note and says these things. You're done. Next. Yes, it's a stupid non-joke that was based on Nick Brecken actually believing the pronunciation of Segway was Seg, and Jake and I immediately jumped on him and have been saying it that way ever since. I thought that he just shortened it for the sake of abbreviation. Yeah, I thought no, he just said that was a nice Seg. Exactly, that's what I thought it was. Did he actually think that... Oh, I thought that was, but I don't know. I mean, I can't... I, th- I thought it was just somebody made a good segue, and it was like, nice Seg, like as a... I guess there know, was an apostrophe but, there. Yeah, oh, it could be. I thought I thought Nick just... You were making fun of him for something you, you that... You thought Nick was just stupid. <laughs> I, we both thought Nick was clever. Nick Brecken, if you're listening to this, write into <laughs> questions at idlethumbs.net. Yeah. Put this issue to rest. <clears throat> uh, Doskius writes, Raping Literature, Dear the mm. Idle Thumbs Podcast. I don't have a question, just a game idea I thought was rad enough to share with you guys. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> with, <laughs> with da- this is actually kind of clever, I think. With Dante's Inferno behind us, I've started to wonder what the next literary classic is going to be, bent over the proverbial barrel by the games industry, and I realized which could be the easiest and most appropriate to adapt. Cervantes' Don Quixote. Adapt. Adapt becomes the new euphemism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which would be the easiest to adapt, to adapt in quotes, over yeah. a barrel. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah, what's funny is that people already use words like exploit for that purpose. Yeah. Which is hilarious. But this guy me. just said yeah, bend I know. over a barrel and adapt in the ass, basically. <laughs> uh, all right. Go ahead, guy that yeah, wrote that. Assume the adaptation position. <laughs> uh, so he continues the game will obviously play exactly like Shadow of the Colossus. Wait, what was the game? Don Quixote. Okay. Um, 
The game would obviously play exactly like Shadow of the Colossus. You would roam a giant open world where you find, scale, and slay enormous monsters. Every time you defeat one, you'd get a little scene where a random townsperson would thank you for liberating their poor village from the creature. But as you ride off to your next adventure, the delusion would falter and you'd hear the guy shouting about how he can't grind, grind oats anymore. At the end of the game, you'd get a long sweeping view of a bunch of destroyed windmills across the landscape and view all of the death and destruction you had caused. This reveal would be so gripping and emotional it would make you cry when it's released on the PS3 in 2015 under the title Shadow and the Colossus 2, Everything's Windmills Everywhere in Hell. <laughs> All right. I really like that idea, actually. I think that's awesome. And I think that kind of thing, Steve, the reason I read this email is because Steve and I were talking about this kind of concept, sort of. Over a game of Imperial 2030. Yes, just on Those Sunday. Those two of you guys are famous Vanneman. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Sean Vanneman. Well, he's famous for being Sean Vanneman. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love stuff like that. And I, I wish more games would, would mess with perception in that way. And that's a, that would be a cool way to represent Don Quixote in a game. And that title would be a good title for it. It would. That would be the correct title. <laughs> Although Shadow Shadow of the Colossus 2 um, is already coming out. It's Shadow and Colossus back in action. Oh, right. That's well documented. Yes. <laughs> Buddy cop. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Game. But this the third Video one game. being <laughs> yeah. sort of like how the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean has licensed the book on Stranger Tides. If the third Shadow... Wait, uh, has it? Yes. Really? Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is called Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Weird. Yeah. I don't that know what that means. That book is not even in print anymore. It's, I guess it will be back. now. <laughs> but yeah, we're talking. There's some graph on the Telltale Games forums that is like Pirates of the Caribbean, the ride, Monkey Island franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean, the movies, and on Stranger Tides, the book. And it is just like the analogy that I used at work was it's like a snake eating uh, its own tail, except that it's a two headed snake that's eating its own tail and then the tail of an additional snake that is like. It's the weirdest fucking thing. It's that that whole It's one crazy snake. That whole nest of It sounds like it's multiple crazy snakes. It's all snakes. It's oops all snakes eating each it's other. It's all snakes all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a book all that All snakes eating each other all the time. The, who was it by Tim Powell or something? Tim Powers. Tim yeah, Powers, it's, it's yeah. The book that Ron Gilbert was reading when making Monkey Island plus the the parts of the Caribbean ride was the other inspiration for that game. And then the Monkey Island games uh, were going to be adapted into a feature film at Industrial Light and Magic. They were trying to do an animation thing. They pitched it to the screenwriters of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, uh, and then a lot of the effects, the people who were working on the McAllen film ended up being the effects crew for the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which was written by the guys who had been pitched the story for the McAllen film, and now they're adapting the book that was the inspiration for the McAllen game, which was also based <laughs> on the ride Pirates of the Caribbean. So, it's fucked up. <laughs> that uh, is actually amazing. That's yeah. an incredible... Con I didn't even realize there were that many interconnections. Yeah, I was aware of the thematic kind of progression. But they no, all actually are completely... It's just this, this horrible... It's a thousand snakes eating. It's, and, it's, and this it's book, the Olympic rings of yeah, things. No, no, snakes. <laughs> snakes. Also, this book has been out of print for a long time. I... I Tried to track a copy down a while ago, and it's really expensive, but probably not anymore. There was a really shitty paperback in print, like within a couple months of that blog when Ron Gilbert first talked about that. I, I, I bought it. Oh, it's, really? It's pretty good. It's back in print now, though. Okay. If you like sweet pirate stories, it's a good one. Sweet. Um, what if you don't like pirates or stories? But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'd be probably not like so it. So in that, in that, you'll vein, not like any aspect of it. <laughs> uh, Shadow, Shadow of the Colossus should totally license Don Quixote for the third game after the Buddy Cop one, which right. is the second one. Right. That's a, that franchise is going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I like Shadow and Colossus. <laughs> Joseph Thron I would play it. <laughs> writes uh, <laughs> funny games and jokes. Dear <laughs> idolatrous thumbs podcasters, make them laugh. You had a good discussion about humor and games with Sean Vanneman, by whom I assume he means famous Vanneman. He means Sean Vanneman. Uh, Sean famous Vanneman. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> I agree that it usually coexists with drama. However, you neglected entertainment like Airplane, which doesn't have a cohesive narrative. Uh, what you said in another discussion about knowing rules of composition so they can be broken intelligently is completely applicable to that movie. There's a great example of that. Based on the context of one scene, it seems like a character is looking into a mirror. Unexpectedly, the reflection of the character steps through the mirror and your brain explodes as you try to parse what just happened. Here are some flash games that subvert game concepts for laughs. Achievement unlocked, don't shit your pants, passage in 10 seconds, and you have to burn the rope. I know that the chances of someone making the airplane of video games are slim to nil, but I feel like this branch of humor is a worthwhile tangent. Thanks for reading, Joseph from Austin, Texas. We didn't talk about airplane on the podcast, but Sean and I, I think we're actually talking about that at the Telltale booth right after the oh, panel, really? because it is, like, airplane is one of, the, like, the exceptions that proves the rule, kind of, of just, like... Which rule? Of... You Comedy can't, you can't, you can't just drama. make a thing that is just... Oh, just jokes, jokes, like, jokes, yeah, you gags, can't, you gags, You can't make, gags, oops, yeah. all jokes. Right. Uh... <laughs> uh. <laughs> but but then it's like, well, what about airplane? It's like, yeah, what what about airplane? That's like the one that does that right in the sort of hang, like that one little period of Zucker Brothers movies, right? And no one else does that in a way that's good. It's usually 
It's they're it's, usually horrible. It's a, like it's scary comedy movie. adventure yeah. or romantic comedy or you know well, or they do them but they're shitty or, and they, or it's, someone it's, tries it and fails horribly. But I or mean, tries it makes a shit ton of money off of it and it's the Wayans brothers for the last but it's ten not, years. But it's not good like date yeah. movie or scary movie. Yeah. Or right. Whatever. I'm not saying it's good. Yeah. I mean I yeah. agree that it generally fails, but not most, necessarily because they don't do it. Movies just that are don't do billed well. as a comedy are actually a funny romance movie or a funny yeah. adventure movie yeah. or a yeah. funny buddy cop movie yeah. or whatever. And, but I mean, like, even Airplane or crime. basically evolved or, you know, came out of, like, old Mel Brooks movies, you know, like... Wasn't those, young Fra- those basically contemporaries? I, th- I thought that Airplane came out after, like, Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles and stuff. Maybe so, but, I, I mean, those were still straight-up parodies of specific genres, yeah. whereas Airplane is just, like... Well, airplane was airplane was this parody of at the time the really successful disaster airplane disaster movies. genre. I like at the time, true. there were tons of movies that not tons, but there were quite a few. It was like volcanoes in the late '90s or whenever that was, and uh, that years, that movie was Armageddon. like a direct response to those hmm. and has outlived all of those films. Yeah, okay. But there was there was I think a movie on that era called Airport, and it was literally like a serious yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. And so airplane was a direct satire of that. I didn't know that. Secrets of airplane. The airplane secrets revealed. Um, yeah, I think there were some adventure games that tried to be that and weren't weren't good. Oh man, this is one hundred percent unrelated. That's okay. It's uh, the Idle Thumbs podcast. <laughs> I, I had a really good experience with fan interpretation uh, this week because I was looking on the Bioshock wiki, um, and and just to uh, give props to those guys, I think the Bioshock fan wiki is the most common tool that we used for reference for <laughs> what was in Bioshock 1 uh, during the development of we Bioshock all, 2. all the goddamn time at Telltale as well. Like, I would be like, okay, so what audio logs were in Bioshock 1? Uh, Bioshock fan wiki, they've transcribed right, them all. Them. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um, but, uh, so, thank you. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, I looked up, uh, I was looking up the different, like, consumables and stuff in Bioshock 2 on the wiki because I wrote the descriptions for those and so I looked up uh, on the wiki when it edited it with your account no oh. I put them in the game they put them in the wiki and then I looked up the entry for gainer peaches which you know have my name on them and they're the canned fruit that you can eat in the in the game and uh there's like under the tri- it's like trivia or something some fan had put an interpretation that was like gainer peaches are the only kind of uh canned fruit that you find in Rapture in Bioshock 2. One is led to believe that the Gainer Produce Corporation therefore had a monopoly on the tin fruit industry in Rapture. <laughs> I'm like, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Uh, people are funny and awesome. But that's true, though. Now that's that's because I mean, it, if someone ever Bioshock makes Bioshock 3, 3 they're like, <laughs> so what's the deal with Gainer Peaches? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. It's a monopoly. I, I think I think that that interpretation is based on the fact that I wrote a kind of long description for those, which was like... Because a, you were indulging yourself to the fucking max on I, it? I absolutely was, I, because I like Julie Langford from the first game from Arcadia, and she's not in Bioshock 2 at all, but I use it as an excuse to write a quote from Julie Langford talking about how Gainer Peaches are the perfect food. <laughs> uh, and then it says, like, quote from Julie Langford uh, from a study... Uh, commissioned by the commissioned Gainer by the Gainer Corporation. Produce uh, Cor- Corporation, yeah, and so that led to the guy thinking. Mm. Anyway, Maybe stuff is just, silly. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Thank you, fans. Um, all right, so Andreas of the Idle Slot Thumbs podcast <laughs> writes uh, CPU Bach. Hey, bros. In the conf grenade, Chris suggested Sid Meier might be the Bach of game design, which seemed like a fairly apt analogy in my opinion. But it also reminded me of a game that Sid made after Civili- Civilization One. Civ- C- CPU Bach. I don't know if this is real. You guys need to tell me if this is real. I've not seen it. I have not seen it with my own eyes, but it's a 3DO exclusive title that oh. generates music in the style of Johann Sebastian Bach with insightful information of how fugues work and things like that to go along with it, which interests me greatly. Have any of you heard of this? Is there a way I can experience it other than finding it and a 3DO on eBay? As a fan of both Bach and Sid Meier and CPUs, I feel like <laughs> CPU Bach is something I should own. Maybe Firaxis could make a remake of it like they did with Pirates and Colonization. That would hmm. be sweet, Andreas. I mean, I have to. There's an emulator for everything, so I have yeah. to assume that there is at least a 3DO emulator. And if you could get your hands on a disc for it, then you could presumably make a program run. Yeah, this actually exists for the 3DO, and it sounds kind of like uh, if you guys read Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, that the program the in that which was called Anthem, which was uh, generated music from corporate charts and stuff. It sounds kind of like that, where from the Wikipedia description, it just procedurally generates hilarious fugues and then 
you get to watch 3D graphics dance around on your screen using your 3DO, apparently. So, Sweet. Yeah. That's real. Real I awesome. Think. Sounds pretty extreme. The, the 90s were awesome for, for stuff like that. Like weird, weird shit. It's like people yeah. will buy multimedia. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's so stop, many like... crazy things that were made like that and actually put on a shelf. It was a really strange time. Um, Neil Fire writes, I posted a version of this on the Shack News, but I'd be interested in hearing the Idle Thumbs Council discuss it. Lots of games. I, I read this because I know Steve obviously is into this. As am I. Uh, lots of games, especially shooters, take place in wastelands of one kind or another. System Shock 2, <laughs> Bioshock, Stalker, the Fallout series, they all have settings where society and infrastructure has mainly gone, at least mostly, to hell. One of the reasons I enjoy Tron 2.0, Mirror's Edge, Deus Ex, and Oblivion is that they're set in functioning alternate worlds. I love claustrophobia and Beartooth survival as much as anyone, but often I want an immersion that's immer ugh, an immersion that's stimulating without being nerve-wracking. The worlds of those games are presented with various levels of detail and sophistication, but they're all coherent visions with people going about their business with, within some massive socioeconomic structure. I'd imagine the creative demands for a game of this second type are fairly immense. It's easier just to provide hints of something that existed in the past than it is to conceive, flesh out, and build a game around a complete world that isn't just a mirror of our own or a variation on something well-known like Tolkien fantasy. Maybe in the opening shot of the game you wake up in your sleeping pod and step out into a glowing blue network of network tubes and a tiny speckled pyramid floats past you, grumbling that it'll be late for the next quickening. What other games are like this? What setting would you like to see? What limitation is there to making such a game other than the sheer creative load? Regards, Neil. Steve, speak. Ah! Um... So, so basically, living world versus dead world, or otherwise yeah. depopulated world. Yeah, I think that's basically what he's getting at. Yeah, a world that is a world that is more vibrant and sort of at, maybe at its peak or somewhere near it, rather than yeah post. Yeah, I I think I think that the biggest challenges are just uh, supporting the player being completely chaotic in that setting. You it's know? easier to trash something that's already trashed. In, yeah, in, in yeah. a game where you where you can fire shotguns yeah. and everything. Yeah, or more. I mean, to 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 take the it costs twice if you only buy it costs more if you only buy one approach. Uh, it's hard to support those verbs when there's a bunch of functioning people around doing going right. about their normal lives because it's like you freak them out. And they have to do stuff, you know, or or you have to restrict the player's ability to do stuff so that order is maintained. And that's generally the approach that seems to be taken in games like that, especially games that have sort of occupied zones and towns or whatever. It's like we're going to make you put your guns away when there are neutral people around, you know, yeah. like Stalker Call of Pripyat does that and like Dragon Age does that. And, you know, you can't just go crazy on the people that are only there to be you know solid citizens uh well and there are some games because the guy mentioned non-open world games as well i mean yeah something like hitman is entirely yeah. predicated on the notion exactly. that people will respond and, and i was gonna br and i was gonna bring that up because yeah they those are very contained environments but they are all about people going about their their normal business and going through routines and stuff and you are this little point of like potential extreme entropy right. at, at all times and it's like when am i going to re unleash that and how and the gameplay is actually about finding ways to be effective with those verbs while being at like while, while disrupting the overall system as little as possible because right. the more disruptive you are to that system the higher your chance of failure yeah and also the less kind of believable the game becomes yeah. and the less you can effectively actually do yeah like at all i mean that's yeah. even outside of the failure state like you, you have fewer and fewer options yeah you know the more you disrupt yeah and so i mean that's that's a really interesting systemic balance where it's like you have all the advantages when nobody's freaking out and so to freak everybody out right. is you have yeah less incentive to do so and they do support it when you do that but almost just because they have to not because like it's a feature you know and so that 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 phase you know the the you freaked everybody out phase is kind of lower fidelity in the behavior of everybody but that's fine because they're the people that have guns are going to be trying to kill you and the people who don't are going to be running away right and it's like there you go yeah. um but yeah like hitman doesn't have any persistence you know if you do that and you die you start over or load a game or whatever you know whereas in gta or something you cause an enormous amount of entropy die and it essentially resets the state of the world and spawns you back you know at the hospital or whatever so there isn't like persistence to your actions right there so 
it it's basically always compromises uh but the thing the the thing about it is that it always assumes that your verbs uh are based on destroying shit right so video games yeah uh, or at least some of them are. And so probably the approach to take is to find mechanics that are nonviolent and also compelling to do. And then you can have a living world based on that because there's really way less distress you can do. Exactly. That's the hard problem. <laughs> That's why we don't see more of that because the, the easiest thing to do in a video game is draw a line Fucking from the player to somewhere dude. else and then take hit points off of it. Right. Uh, and we don't really know how to make a lot of other core interactions be as fun and as extensible as that so you get a dead world with only guys that hate you in it and maybe there were cool people here before and you can find out about them but they're not here anymore uh, because they're really expensive and hard to make fun <laughs> pretty much yeah fuck those guys yeah. Yeah. man i'm just gonna shoot them yeah they suck so yeah uh they that's what i away think awkwardly that's what I think about why there's not more of that stuff. Yep. But I mean, even some of the games that he that he described, like for instance, Mirror's Edge, like that is not actually a good example because no, that not. is a one hundred percent depopulated yeah. world. Yeah, but aesthetically, the, the it's very clean. The aesthetic yeah. sold him on this seems to be a po a populous okay. world because there are people the buildings are waxing the floors, and, you yeah, know. Exactly. Right. But none of them are here, right. you know. So I mean, that's that's another yeah. potential another, another potential compromise of like at least not make it look like the place hasn't fallen apart part right. everybody's not here for a reason but you're in a world where all those people are yeah. a block over outside of the police cordon or whatever i know? mean i think i think brink wants to do that I, I don't think they've shown anything from the actual main city proper in that game but yeah. I, mean, I think it's it wants to depict that kind of they're only they're only showing the junkyard stuff yeah right? which is off the like not actually on that same landmass. it's off right. the coast hmm. but yeah Video games. Yep. I think that's Thanks all for we the got. question, video game question asker man. Dot org. Video game slash at slash game period period dot museum slash html man, did you guys dot see, web. Uh, the Canon Corporation is yeah. filing for a top level domain. Yeah, you can do that now. Dot they're, they're, they're the, seem to be the first people of note to actually be going and buying yeah. that on TLD. Uh, that's hardcore Doug suggested they start selling them to nerds which I think is hilarious so it's really so funny you, so you could buy yeah. starwars.canon yeah that would be amazing <laughs> <laughs> also your, if, if someone could if someone could like actually launch an initiative that would take that shit off of the real wikipedia and relegate it to dot canon then that would be great I actually, I actually <laughs> but, but, don't agree with that really oh, I think I wikipedia should add wikipedia. more shit into it more just stupid crap yeah. about this guy was in the 18th millionth Star Wars book who appears on page 93. Oh, Wiki like, is structurally capable of holding a huge amount of information. And there's people, like people who administrate Wikipedia are all about just deleting shit all over the place. So, Chris is just annoyed by the existence of canon. Well, I that's part of it. But it's also that it seems like Wikipedia editors have really ridiculous biases like they will actually yeah. claim things are not notable when they're far more notable than yeah, some bullshit star wars character but that the solution to that shouldn't be to throw the star wars stuff off it should be to put the other stuff well in. if it's actually not notable that should be the solution i mean wikipedia has well, notability that's guidelines true, I mean, that are not right. like, so you, you you guys have followed us all the way down the rabbit hole we are having a, a <laughs> conversation about sorry. the editing policies of There's the star just, wars like, wikipedia right page. now there are a huge amount of this on a video game podcast no, about, about, so you guys have you're, oh. you're at the end of the line you you've, you've reached the fucking singularity of nerdy shit sorry uh, and, <laughs> and i apologize wikipedia is actively for, deleting a whole bunch of stuff about indie games and open source software right now and it really ticks me off because I think that those things are perfectly relevant. Idle Thumbs is a video game podcast on the fucking internet where you download it through a stupid RSS feed. This is like, what? I'm going to talk about Wikipedia for a second. Connection lost. This podcast is over. Thanks for listening. Fuck everyone. We hate you. Uh, video game. Idle Thumbs is recorded in front of a live studio audience at Massive Aardvark Incorporated. When we get to 50 episodes of this one, if we do, we should start over with one again and call it an Idle Thumbs podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or like... <laughs> an Idle Thumbs experience. Right, like podcast at Mark Idle Thumbs, the worst. <laughs> yeah, right. Cast at thumb, like slash cast. Right, right. Like <laughs> at dot thumbs, like... <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I hate that shit. And everyone does it. Yes. Cast dot thumbs slash slash right. pod. <laughs> pod. <laughs> I like the idea. With, the, like, with like the little two, like squared two above it.
terrible. Oh, Steve, you're fucking it up. I remember the thing to do. (laughs) It's... What's going on, Silence? No! (laughs) Your new nickname is Silence. (laughs) Silence. No, I'm just just wondering what you think about this. Silence! Silence. (laughs) Shut up. What? (laughs) No, be quiet. Ugh. Worst name. My name should be Silence in this on this fucking podcast series. I don't have to say anymore. I hate you. <laughs> okay. We can just replace you. Yeah. Get famous in here. We replace Silence with fucking famous. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up. Mm. Ah, silence. <laughs> You're hated. <laughs> Not by you though. You wouldn't be. I wouldn't be that by you. This This is... (laughs) This is... Oh, where's that timpani drum guy over in the back? Oh, he's usually here. (laughs) He he died. Golly. This episode is in memory of our timpani drummer guy who died. Yeah, it sucks. (laughs) He was killed. 